Hello and welcome to another DIY Engineers video. In this video, I'll be going over the 28BYJ48 stepper motor and the ULN2003 stepper motor controller. In this video, we'll be going over how to connect these two together using Arduino Uno, how to program them in Arduino. We'll be going over some examples to show you how to use them, including how to rotate it back and forth over a specified rotation angle, as well as how to rotate it using external inputs, such as a rotary encoder. So let's go ahead and get started. So now the 28BYJ48 stepper motor, uh, it's a great stepper motor for a wide rate of applications really. Uh, and it's really good for anyone looking to learn about stepper motors. Now, basic uh, specs of this motor include the fact that it's five volts DC or direct current. It has a gear, internal gear ratio of 64 to one. The net steps per revolution is 2048. Uh, which comes about to almost 0 0.18 degrees per step. That's because the motor itself has 32 steps per revolution, and then you have a gear ratio of 64 to 1, which if you do 32 times 64, that's how you get uh, 2048. Which means that if you can control down to uh, one step, you have that uh, precision that we talked about before with the almost 0 0.18 degrees. Uh, and the coil type, of this type of uh, stepper motor is unipolar. Now, you need to control your stepper motor. We can use the EULN2003 motor controller. Uh, this is used to interface with your stepper motor, in this case the 28BYJ48, and your microcontroller, which in this case will be the Arduino Uno. Uh, the motor controller accepts four digital inputs from the microcontroller, which are on the left labeled as input pins. Uh, which are IN1 through IN4, and five cables coming from the 28BYJ48 separate motor. Uh, there's also the input power, which you can see at the bottom, uh, which can be set to 5 volts or 12 volts, which is specific, for this specific motor, you would set it to 5 volts. Uh, the motor controller also has four step indicators, LEDs, which are on, shown on the right. Uh, that way you can see the state of the coils of the motor as it rotates. When running fast, it can be hard to see, but if you actually record it with a slow-mo camera, you will be able to see them uh, alternate between each LED as it's sending the signal. Now, we talked about the motor and the motor controller. Now, let's actually take a look at their connections. As we talked about before, you have five pins on the right, top right side of the ULN2003 that go to the motor itself the 28BYJ48. At the bottom, you do have the ground and five volt connections. And then on the left, you have the digital inputs, outputs coming from the Arduino. In this case, we're gonna connect them to digital output eight, nine, 10, and 11, as shown on the diagram. So now let's go ahead and work through some examples. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. We'll first go to Arduino so we can take a look through the code. In this first example, we will define the speed and acceleration at which we want to rotate the stepper motor. We will go ahead, rotate a specified amount of steps. Specifically, we will do three rotations. Then we will stop, and then we will rotate in the opposite direction by the same number of steps. So three more rotations, but now in the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So first, we define the pins for each of the inputs that we're going to use, or actually outputs that we're going to use on our Arduino Uno. We then define motor interface type 8. We define the acceleration. And we also define the constant integer for the number of steps. So our steps for evolution equal to 2048. We will define the speed and acceleration in steps per second and steps per second squared. And then we go into the void loop. Well, well, we will tell basically the stepper to move to a specific position. In this case, is three times SPR, which are the steps per revolution. That means we will do three times 2048, which will equal to three revolutions. We will then run the motor to that position. Then we will wait a delay of a thousand milliseconds or one second. And then we will basically repeat by going in the opposite direction, do a delay, and 
that will take us back to the beginning um, of the loop to repeat going back and forth through revolutions one way, through revolutions the other. So now let's go ahead and upload our code. All right, and let's take a look to see what happens. If you would like to go ahead and copy the code that we just went over in this example, as well as the one we'll use in the next example, please go to DIYengineers.com. I'll have the link in the description for this specific blog post where you can copy the code for both example number one and example number two that are gonna go through. So go ahead, head out to DIYengineers.com and get the code. Here we have example number one running, and we can see how the stepper motor is going to counterclockwise. It's already running, so once it gets to the third turn, it will stop as it's doing now. We can see the motor controller stopping and now going back on the other direction, and we can see the stepper motor running clockwise now. So that's example number one. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next example. In this example, we'll go ahead and control the position or rotation of our stepper motor using a rotary encoder. If you're not familiar with rotary encoders, please go ahead and take a look at my earlier video. So let's get started. Uh, inputs for defining the pins for the Arduino that are going to control the motor are the same. We already looked at that. Same thing as the steps for revolution. We do go ahead and have to define DT and clock, which are outputs A and B of the encoder. We will create some variables called counter and angle, which will first initialize to zero on this state. And we'll also create a state and a last state. We'll go ahead and define the speed, max speed and acceleration. We've done that before, maybe different numbers now. And define the pin mode for our clock and DT for our encoder. And then we'll go ahead and define a last state equal to digital read of the clock. So then we go ahead and depending on the, whether or not there's a change on the encoder, this will trigger allowing us to increase the count or decrease the count of the movement on our counter based on the rotations or changes made to the encoder. Basically keeps track of the total rotation either clockwise or clockwise of our encoder. And then we create this such that if the count exceeds 100, we max it out. That will essentially mean that we cannot rotate more uh, than a, speci a specified amount on our um, encoder. And then we use that counter at the end, uh, after we exit that if statement, to move the stepper motor to 200 times that counter, which would mean 200 times 100 gives us 20,000. So we cannot move more than that. Of course, you can always change this number. But that will define basically the sensitivity of how much you need to rotate your encoder to get an equivalent rotation on your stepper motor. And then it goes into that position. And then it goes back and essentially you're just controlling now the rotation based on uh, your angular rotation on your actual encoder. Again, if you want to get more movement or less movement out of your uh, stepper motor based on a rotation on the encoder, all you would have to do is change this number by going up and down. And here we have example number two. You can see that as soon as I start rotating the encoder, you're gonna get motion on your stepper motor. And as I said in the, in the programming section, the sensitivity will have to do with that factor that you add in parentheses towards the end of the code. So in this one, you can see that I rotated a lot and we get very little motion. You can also go backwards and get rotation on the opposite direction. All right, this concludes this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Hope you liked it and see you in the next one. Bye.